Hey guys, it's Erica, and this is a video and for like a thank you for 300 subscribers. It was really, really quickly the gap I had from 200 to 300. It happened fairly quickly, more than, more quickly than, um, I'm gonna look up when I put up my 200 subscriber thanks video, which I think was like 20 facts about me and stuff. But, um, yeah, I just really wanted to say thank you guys so, so much for subscribing and liking me and all the positive comments and everything. It just, it really means a lot to see just, like, all that and stuff from you guys. It, it really means a lot. And I see every single comment, no matter what it is and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking for it. I should have been doing this before I, um, before I did it. Why is that not in that one? Hang on. Da, 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 da. I don't want to start playing my video. On November 5th, and it is, I don't know exactly when the date I hit 300, because I was out of town, I was visiting family, but it is currently January 1st when I'm uh, doing this, so that was less than two months, so that's really, really cool to see. I think on my first channel to reach, I think, everything up to like 300 or 400, I don't remember, it took like three months to reach 100, so that's really cool to see the quick, how quick that thing, that it sort of happened and stuff, and... I feel like, like, on my previous channel, I didn't even like the name of my channel. I kind of didn't like what I was doing, but having this channel and stuff, I really feel like I'm doing more of what I, I sort of wanted to do. I feel like I felt, like, restricted based off of what I did for my first time, so it's really good to have, like, a second chance like that to kind of, like, do what you want to do and stuff. So, yeah, but if you cannot tell by the title of this video, this is my K-pop first. So it's just, like, my I have a list of ten things that I'm going to go through that show, um, that are just, like... Your first things in, like, K-pop and stuff that maybe every K-pop fan goes through and stuff. Maybe not all of them, I don't think, but... Yeah, so... Number one is the first time I saw K-pop. So, when I first... Because I'm American and stuff, so the first time I ever saw K-pop, I was watch, I was going through the React channel. You know, like, the React Bros, like, YouTubers react to top 10 music videos of 2018 or some of those lists and stuff and they had I was just going through their stuff and I was just watching everything stuff I knew about stuff I didn't know about I was just watching everything and one of them was like youtubers react to k-pop so I started watching it there was like two or three out and stuff this had a big either late 2014 or early 2015 because I remember in the summer I watched of 2015 I was in a k-pop and Late 2015 is when I started my first channel, um, and stuff, so it was sometime around that time that I got into K-pop, that was, like, the first time I saw it, I don't know, like, I don't remember which one I saw first, but that was my first time ex seeing it, experiencing it, and stuff, and it was, it was, it was life-changing, obviously, and stuff, but, um, cause how much it's influenced my life and impacted me based on decisions I've made and stuff, so... Yeah, like, I, I react for fun, so it, it kind of has an impact on it and stuff, and I've been reacting for over three years and stuff, so. Yeah, okay, the f number two. Here we go with number two. First K-pop group I got into. Okay, so the first sort of, I guess, experience when you experience, like, a K-pop group, it was it was EXO and stuff, and I don't I don't remember if I... I think I was just looking at different K-pop and going through the recommended and stuff, but the first group I got into, you know, just, like, really investigating, just trying to find, like, social media, learning all their names, the whole shebang bang, it was EXO and stuff. They got me into K-pop, and at that time, EXO was the most popular group in K-pop. I think they still are. You can't deny, like, statistics and stuff. Like, it, it may be hard to understand, um, to see what K-pop is really popular interna internationally or domestically within Korea, but you can't, like, EXO just still killing the game, and you just can't deny the EXOLs and stuff. You just you just can't deny it. They're just, yeah, you can have your favorite group and whatever, but, yeah, EXO's still definitely up there and stuff. I would say EXO 101, even though they're disbanding very soon, um, and BTS are probably currently, I'm dating this video, um, the ones that are the most popular and stuff that I have experienced when I was in Korea and stuff. I haven't been there for like six months, so it could be totally different. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so EXO is a group I sort of got into, first of all, and stuff. And I am multi-fandom, so, yeah. Number three, my first bias, obviously, is going to be from EXO and stuff. If they're the first group I got into, first, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to work out that way. It was, it was D.O. from EXO, um, 
they were just, I don't know, I don't know exactly which music video it sort of just like happened with, but there's just something about his voice that just hit my soul and then I never looked back since and stuff and I don't pick my biases just they just it just I don't it's confusing I think when you pick your bias you don't pick your bias your bias picks you that's the thing that's that's what we go with okay if you didn't know that's a thing it's a thing so yeah okay my first k-pop album these kind of go a little bit in order and stuff of when they happen some of them are out of order and stuff and, and timeline wise but I actually got two k-pop albums for my first k-pop album and it was these babies right here Another EXO one. EXO is a lot of firsts for me. Um, EXO lucky one? EXO exact lucky one version. And the EXO exact the monster version. So I got both of these at the same time. I ordered them at the same time. These are both the Korean versions. Which was crazy is that I almost got the Chinese versions too. For I don't know what reason. When I literally have three of these that are the same album. Because I have the um, repackaged Lotto one stuff too. So these were my first albums. I remember that first feeling, getting your first album and getting the photo cards and everything. I've never gotten a bias for my photo card and stuff, and I don't like to trade. I like to get what I get and stuff, so, yeah, but these were my first and stuff, so they're very special because it's just, like, they're my first and stuff, but, um, yes. So, um, and so the first K-pop poster that I ever had, because, you know, you get posters and stuff, too, was to these and stuff as well. There was, I have one that is literally just the back of this. That lighting adjusted very nicely. And so, but it's just literally what you see right here is what the poster is. It has the dates or the month and the year of the album's release and then the logos and then the name of the album and stuff. And that was, I had actually two of those. I don't know if I have two anymore. I think I might just have one. And then, um, a lucky one with all their faces on it and then a monster one with all their faces on it. So those, I tell you, I had four posters and stuff to start out with. So that was fun and stuff. So my first K-pop friends, which may sound weird now, but back in the day when it was even like 2015, it was not as popular K-pop and stuff. And a lot of the times you didn't, I, during that time, I personally didn't have a lot of people around me that liked K-pop. I was probably the only one in my freaking county that liked K-pop at the time. So, um, yeah, it was hard to find friends that really liked K-pop and stuff, but what I did is I, I hopped on the various social medias and stuff, you know, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the, um, what, what, Vine, it was when Vine was still a thing and stuff, and, um, there was, like, on Vine, it was on Vine where I found them, and it was just, like, um, somebody posted, like, do you want to be in, like, a group chat on Vine and stuff, and there was, like, ten of us, and I said, yeah, sure, and then it was on Kakao, too, which, that's how, like, I know, I think I changed my Kakao after, I think I've had two Kakaos, it was that one and then the one I have now, I think, or was it the same one, and I just, I don't remember, um, I think they were different because my username would have been different. I don't remember. Whatever. Those details are not important and stuff. But that was... Those are my first friends was a little group chat that was from... That went from, like, requesting on Vine to, uh... To move to Kakao to, and then follow them on, like, Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And follow the other ones. I think we all followed each other on, like, Vine <laughs> somewhat and stuff. But, yeah. And then those are my first friends and stuff. And I don't talk to literally any of them anymore. Most recently, I talked to only one of them, but then I just sort of stopped talking to them. The friendship wasn't... I wasn't comfortable with the friendship that, like, we had. Like, it wasn't, like... I'm not saying it was, like, toxic, but it wasn't, like... The other person's, like, I guess, like, intentions of the friendship. I, I, I've been trying to sort of get out of the friendship for a while, and then just, like, yeah. It, it eventually faded out to where you just, like, stop messaging them every day, and yeah. And stuff you you learn how to grow and mature and stuff and I just I sort of realized what the friendship was and I was just like hey no we're not doing this anymore and stuff and at, at that time it was it it was more based we were actual I would say friends rather than just being based on just like talking about K-pop all the time even though we did quite often but it was it was mainly being friends and I was just like I was just done with the friendship and stuff it's it's a thing it's a whole thing okay so my first bias group which is weird to say because normally the time you only have one bias group, but at first, I claimed my bias group to be GOT7. And it was after Fly came out, and I just fell in love with the Fly concept, 
Got Seven and the whole album and everything. I'm just like, this is my bias group. And then, um, Wings happened for BTS, and then I was just like, shit, it might fucking be BTS and stuff. So now it is currently BTS, but at first I claimed Got Seven, but I, I claimed it too soon because I just can't deny the way, like, BTS makes me feel and just, like, how I personally feel about BTS. So I'm just like, it's different than I feel for every other group, which I feel, I have different feelings for every single group, but it's just, it's on a different level, I think, with BTS and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's just different and stuff. That's the best way I can explain it and stuff. Hopefully you guys understand. Okay, number eight. The first K-pop dance that I learned the choreography to. So, <laughs> I don't remember specifically what it was, um, but it was, it was to a BTS song, and I don't remember if, I think I first, it might have been dope. I think it was. What's the first one that I learned the choreography to? Just the choruses and stuff. And then, I'm pretty sure that one, or it was either Dope or Danger that I learned the choreography to first and stuff. So I don't remember Danger and stuff. All I remember is like a little part of the chorus and stuff. Dope, I remember doing all, I remember all that, but yeah, you're never going to see me dance K-pop and stuff. Hopefully not. But um, yeah, so that was the first K-pop dance that I learned. It was, it was definitely the BTS and it was either dope or danger and stuff and I don't remember exactly because I learned them at the same time so I don't remember which one is first and which one is second it was a long time ago fam my brain been doing gotten through a whole lot of other stuff um since then I've learned more dances and stuff I've actually have kind of sort of performed um a k-pop dance before to a k-pop song and stuff it was for like my dance club when I was abroad in uh Korea um, we had, like, a dance club, and we did, like, a little performance, um, there on campus, and during, like, our international day, or, like, which is just, like, a study abroad fair, um, and we did Momoland's Boom Boom was a part of the dance, because we had various songs in it, and so we did, we did Boom Boom, so I know the chorus to Boom Boom, and so that's, that's all I know from Boom Boom, but that was, that's also really special for me, too, to see, like, that, that was the first one, like, I performed in front of people, whether it was a lot or not any at all so yeah that was that was fun though and stuff but um yeah my first time number nine number nine my first k-pop live performance so my first time ever seeing k-pop perform live i went to seoul music awards for the almost a year ago for my 20th birthday it was a little gift to myself it was going to this little um festival or an award show and stuff and that was very very special and a very good like way to see if you're multi-fan we're very um i think reasonable way is to go to like the festivals or like the concerts and stuff or the award shows i mean and stuff where you have so many groups performing and the thing is that like at award show the people that are performing are going to be the award winners so you're obviously seeing like the best of the best for the award show and stuff so the first group that performed this is soul music awards the 27th Soul Music Awards 2018. So the first group that performed was Monster X. Okay, so that was crazy to see Monster X perform live like that. So that was the first group I ever saw live. But and stuff, and I'm gonna read off the list, even though I've said this list before. Um, I saw well, this is not in order of the performance. Roughly is, but not really. I saw Monster X. I'm reading off a list I have right here. I have it all written down for when <laughs> when I need to say it because I'm not gonna remember all these groups and stuff. So I saw Monster X, New East W, Pristine, Chung Ha, Mamamoo, Ailey, Sudan, 101, 17, B2B, Blackpink, I Am Not, NCT 127, Bopa Gansa, Ga7, Red Velvet, BTS, and Super Genius. So those were all the groups that I saw at this one performance. So you, I just read you off a list, and it probably would have cost me, probably close to $1,000 to see all these groups individually perform live and stuff. But the fact that I was able to just get a little bit of taste, one song or a song and a half or a couple songs, you know, it's it, it was really crazy to, like, see them perform like that and stuff and it was it was if you want to see that go go to like that or go to like KCON or whatever I didn't I never went to KCON so this is my experience of seeing groups perform live so th those are all really really special and stuff but yeah so number 10 
because this is different. I mean, that's very similar. Number nine, first K-pop solo concert. So, like, solo concert for, like, K-pop groups, it's, like, when it's the group or the artist individually performing with not being at, like, a festival or, like, a music show or whatever. It's a solo concert for the group. And it was GOT7 and stuff because I had tried previously. I should have tried earlier to get... Because BTS performed the Wing Trilogy finale, I think, in Seoul. And I had a friend that went to that one. And um, I should have probably tried to get tickets now because I probably could have got tickets, maybe, possibly, probably not, and stuff. I don't really know the ticketing system anyways of how to do it in Korea because it's on a whole other level than in America, let me tell you. Groups have sold out concerts in less than two seconds before. That's crazy. That shit don't happen in America and stuff. So, yeah, I saw that. I experienced that, the wrath and the greatness of it. So, I first tried to get tickets to a BTS event. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't a, a concert per se. It was it was something similar to like a fan event to where they did perform music and stuff. And that was originally going to be like my birthday gift because it happened in January. And it, the tickets were also cheaper too. So that's probably why they sold out so quickly as well. But then it didn't, it didn't end up working out. So yeah, but I still saw them perform live. So that's well, at the Soul Music Awards. So that's all that matters, I guess. And stuff. So yeah, it's, I failed for BTS. And then me and my friend... We're going to go to a Twice concert, Twice Land, um, in Seoul, and that, I ended up failing for that one too, because Twice, you kidding me, trying to get Twice tickets? Mm-mm, fam, I still have not seen Twice before live. That is a group I have to check off my list and stuff, but I can't wait till that day comes, because I'm a crowd when that day comes, just, mm, Twice, come on, fam, let's be real, and stuff, so... Yeah, I felt like getting twice tickets, uh, but I was able to get GOT7 tickets, because they're not as popular in Korea, so... Uh, not as many, the tickets were not getting, they, it was sold out concert for all three days, but, like, it was, it was good to get tickets because they're not as popular, so the tickets don't go as quickly. They went pretty quickly, though, and stuff, like, I could have got better seats than what I had if I wasn't going around trying to click all these different sections and get all the tickets, so, thankfully I got tickets, and then uh, me and one of my friends, uh, I saw them in Korea, so, um, me and my one, one of my friends went to go, and we all got to perform live, and that was I almost cried, fam. And it wasn't even when they were like performing the songs; it was like when they were sitting there and just like talking and stuff. Is when I almost cried, cause yeah, I'm a little bitch, but yeah. Um, and it was it was very special. It's it's completely different than seeing going to like a festival or going to like um an award show or something like that, cause it's it, it's much more intimate. It was a smaller stadium; they weren't in a huge stadium. It was. I, and I had been in that um, stadium. It wasn't not a stadium, but the arena before and stuff. It was where I think when Seoul hosted the Olympics back in like the 80s. It was the 80s, right? Um, the basketball court. And previously for uh, the Ko Young Games, I saw um, the basketball game there. So, yeah, you don't know what Ko Young is, do you? No, you don't go to university in Korea. You don't go to Korea University. You don't say university. That's fine. And so that's a whole different story for a whole different day. But, um, yeah, that was my first time. And it, it just, I like the sort of smaller, I guess, um, the smaller arena, I guess you would say, to where they perform. I don't know what you would specifically call it. I don't. I don't know what it, the, the specific name of it. I, I can't recall it at the time, but, um. Yeah, to having, like, a smaller sort of place with, like, fewer fans, I guess you could say. And a lot of them were also international people. Like, the, the, we did, the, the amount of, like, international fans, I think, definitely outnumbered the amount of, like, Korean fans that were there. And so, because I saw so many foreigners there, so there was definitely a lot there. And But it was, it was really cool to have that sort of experience. Uh, it felt more intimate, I guess you can say. And to just have that experience with just... The, that you all just like got seven and that's why you were there and to just to sort of just have that experience we just like that you can share with like that I was able to share with my friend that I can't share that experience with nobody else and stuff just just me and my friend and stuff and then also just like everybody else in the the like I guess the the facility we'll call it the facility to just like I don't know there's just something special about it that is just like we were the only ones on this day, day two, in Seoul to have this sort of experience. And we can all say that we did that together and stuff. And that was that was really special and stuff to to sort of experience and stuff. Versus like a huge stadium with just like so many different fans and stuff and just 
for so many different people. And so, like, the festival that I went to and the award show, it, it, it was on a different level for when you're at, like, a solo concert and stuff. But, um, yeah, so that was all my K-pop first and stuff. Made, like, go ahead and put in the comments down below maybe your first experience with experiencing K-pop when they first found it or when the first group you got into and stuff or whatever. The first... <laughs> Your first everything, not everything. I don't, I don't even know your first everything, but your first K-pop experiences. I have a list of ten, so it's a nice little guide to go off of in the comments down below. But yeah, and just again, thank you guys for um, 300 subscribers. You know, that's that's a lot. 300, a lot of people and stuff. It don't seem like a lot, but it's a lot. I come from a small town. It's a lot of people and stuff. But then I also been in Seoul before, so I know what a lot of people is. Oh my God, Subway or in Rush Hour, fam. Or, like, after an event, like, the awards show, trying to get... Oh, bro, that was crazy. <laughs> crazy. You don't know, back some point, tell you, but in Seoul, where there's millions of people in one little city and stuff. Not a lot of land, but a whole lot of people. Oh, my gosh, it's crazy. I'm having flashbacks. They're, like, war flashbacks. I have PTSD, fam. But, um, yeah, thank you guys for just loving me. I hope you love me. Do you love me? I love you. It, that's weird. It's stuff creepy. I know. But, um, just thank you for all your support. It means the world to me to know that there's just, like, people out there that'll support you and stuff. I love every single one of you. You know, I, I get the comments of just, like, you're really, really funny. I hope you get more subscribers. And I'm like, that's nothing literally I can control. That's what you guys control by sharing with your friends, telling other people about moi and stuff. I don't know why you tell your friends about me. I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo. But, um... Yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Thank you guys for all the subscriptions, all the views, all the likes, all the dislikes, all the hate comments, all the positive comments and stuff. Love it all. I love it all and stuff. And just just thank you guys so, so much. I can never thank you guys enough because I literally, it's not like I get paid to do this. I don't and stuff. So this is something I just do for fun on the set and to just see support from people is and love from people, it it means a lot and stuff. So thank you guys for just watching me and whatnot and stuff. It it's it's very special to me and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna end this video. If not, I'm gonna start repeating myself like I do all the time. So thank you guys so so much. If you liked me and this is your first time watching me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Again, you can do this whole K-pop list in the comments down below and stuff. So yeah, if you followed enough of the enough of me because I, I wasn't very consistent with how I was saying um, the specifics of what like my first K-pop album, my first poster and stuff like that, whatever, and stuff. So yeah, if you liked this video, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you liked me and want to see more of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to see my videos the second they come out, hit that notification button. If you want to follow me on social media, I got a Twitter, an Instagram, a Facebook page, a Snapchat, and a Tumblr. It's all in the description down below. The description's really nice because it'll just link you except for my Snapchat and stuff, which is rude that Snapchat don't let you change your username because I wish I could because that, that did really come about in most of them. That didn't be fun. Anyways, <laughs> all that's in the description down below or at the end screen. I just, I brain farted, I'm sorry. Um, subscribe, share me with your friends. If you want to see me be successful and get me more subscribers, share with your friends and stuff, because it's something I can control. I just literally record, I put it up. Sometimes I get like 10 views, sometimes like 5,000. I'm just like, ooh, where'd you come from? <laughs> Why is that this video? Like this, I don't think this reaction was good, but it got the most views and then whatever and stuff. But yeah, share with your friends that love K-pop. Probably don't share me with your friends that don't like K-pop, that they won't like me. But, um, yeah, so thank you guys so, so much for watching. Love you, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.